getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that doesn't collapse too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. Pretty good little jump. Check uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that doesn't collapse too far, but uh, it's adequate. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In this video I will show how I did a shooting of the new Omega Moonwatch brought to market in 2019 at the 50 year anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. And I will use my Phase 1 IQ4 to do the shooting. On the XF body I will have mounted the Schneider Kreuznach Blue Ring lens, 120mm macro lens. I will show how to do manual focus stacking via tethered shooting and my MacBook. But I will also show how to do automated focus stacking with the corresponding tool in the XF body. Let's get started with the video. Connecting my MacBook Pro with the Phase 1 IQ4 digital back using the USB-C cable which was shipped with the digital back was all I had to do to get my tethered shooting up and running. Our shooting object as said in the introduction to this video is the Omega Moonwatch brought to market last year as a tribute to the Apollo 11 mission which happened 50 years ago when you look back from 2019. It's shipped in a very special box. So you see here 21st of July 1969 when the mission happened, first step on the moon. And we are going to see that watch in great detail based on the macro shooting we are going to see in this video. Opening the box reveals additional accessories shipped with the watch. The watch is a special limited edition, as said, came to market last year in 2019. And I think you get a very valuable package here, in particular since limited editions typically increase in value over the years. Lifting up the watch, you see it's placed on a lunar module, which is again very nice and a tribute to the Apollo 11 mission, which happened by now 51 years ago. So I'm now here in Capture One. This is the live view of tethered shooting. And you see here my Omega Watch preview. I can adjust all the exposure and camera settings here on the side menu. So I'm here in manual exposure. I have ISO set to 50. The aperture is open to f4.0. And the shutter speed is 1 sixth of a second. White balance is on auto and so on. I can even choose here my file format. So I've chosen here IIQ 16 extended and that's all perfect. So for instance, everything I'm doing now in the settings will immediately be shown here in the exposure preview. So for instance, let's have a longer exposure time. Let's go from one sixth of a second to half of a second. And then this will immediately be shown here in the exposure preview. So it's quite nice. It's a typical studio setup and it's very helpful if you want to do, for instance, uh, you know, shooting models or shooting fashion, but also shooting products like we have it here. And I have an excellent magnification here to 100%, which helps me to really get this large on screen and to judge about sharpness. And uh, you see here, for instance, parts of the watch with all the structure. Very, very nice. I can focus here. I show this here on the camera focus. So let's get this out of focus. Let's get this to the other side. Let's get this here so I can nicely focus, can also fine tune my focus if I want and can make sure in this way, now I think it's sharp if you look at that here, Omega Speedmaster Professional now is very, very sharp and maybe on the 
exposure time. Let's get this a bit faster, but just a little bit to get more contrast into the image. That's fine. Now I can actually take the shot here by pressing on capture or pressing on that button I know from the IIQ4 on the digital back. So I think the shot has been taken. You saw it flashing here on the screen and if I go into my main screen from Capture One, I have the watch here nice, polished and shiny. I can zoom in and see if this is all sharp with the magnification tool. And you see this just looks very, very nice, super sharp, super crisp, 150 megapixels and a nice shot. So now we are going to improve this. And uh, the reason is if you look at the preview here in the live view, here we have some sharpness, here we are really sharp, at least in the settings we had before, this is completely fuzzy. So we are going to close the aperture now more. We keep an ISO of 50 because that's the best possible ISO for lowest noise, but we close the aperture from f4.0 to f8.0. And by doing so, the live preview should darken. So we need to basically have a longer exposure time here. So let's go to two seconds here. And then this gets brighter again. Now you see, now we can see there is something uh, written on that plate here, but it's still not sharp. And what you can do typically to overcome this and the reason why I've actually, by the way, chosen f8.0 is because that's the sweet spot of the 120 millimeter macro lens from Schneider Kreuznach. And that is the best aperture in terms of performance. So uh, we are now doing a focus stacking and there are two ways to do focus stacking. One is we go into the camera on the XF body and let the camera automatically do this. Or we do it in capture one here by stepwise moving or shifting the focus towards getting a full depth of field with sharpness corner to corner. So we are going to start now here from the bottom and we'll get full sharpness in this place and then we successively shift the focus along the vertical axis to get everything sharp and then later on we stack the images in post-processing and hopefully get the full depth of field with sharpness corner to corner in the way I want to have it. So let's start by zooming in to 100% and let's move down to the bottom here. By the way look at that sharpness here, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So here, this is still sharp and then here it becomes a little more fuzzy. So I think this is good. Let's see if we get this sharper. You see how this becomes sharper here? We see even more structure now. There is a little hair here on that plate or some dust. So let's shift focus. Now it's getting a bit more fussy. So let's move this back. I think this is perfect. So let's take the shot. Let's see if the shot is appearing here. Here we go. Let's open this. And now we have full sharpness here. That's actually very good. I think the image is still a little bit overexposed. So we need to go back and do this again. So let's say we go to a one second exposure here. I think that's better. Maybe something in between 1.3. I think that looks good. Let's take the shot. That looks very good. And now if we zoom in here, we get full sharpness here. Absolutely brilliant. And this is sharp here. It starts to become fuzzy again. So we have to shift this now. So let's move the image down and let's now focus on this part here. So let's move the focus here until we get the same sharpness here. 
And I don't know if you can see this uh, on YouTube, but now we get the full structure here on this messing plate. I think this is perfect. Maybe one step back. Yes, this is better. Let's take the shot. Fantastic. Let's see when it appears here. Here we go. Very good. Now we have the full sharpness here. Let's zoom in. Yes, this looks perfect. And in this way, I'm now moving step by step focus and shift it along the vertical axis and then stack these images on top of each other to achieve the full sharpness. So I'm doing my work now. As I said, I can autom automate this uh, on the XF body, but I wanted to see it here in tethered shooting. There are software tools which you can use for that, but they did not work with Capture 120. That's the newest version here and also not with the IQ4. So there's Helicon Focus, which is something uh, developed and also advertised and promoted side by side with Phase 1, but also with other camera brands where you can automate this process. But uh, it was not working here. It crashed all the time on Mac OS Catalina and it also did not cooperate with the IQ4. And I think I can use the plugin for stacking the images later on, but it did not use for tethered shooting within Helicon Remote. So uh, I'm going to complete my work now. I switched the video off and when I'm done, I'm going to show the workflow to stack these images and then we look at the final result. Helicon Focus is a plugin which you can use within Capture One so that you don't have to leave your working environment for post-processing. And in this case, I was stacking 38 images and the process is kind of straightforward. There are three rendering methods you can use. One is a weighted average approach, one is a depth map, and one is called pyramid, and they all three work just fine. And there are tiny little nuances, which I'm not going to explain in this video because this will crush the length of the video. But I give you a bit of a flavor by showing you a preview how that rendering is done right now. Looking at the final image in Capture One, so this is the stacked image consisting of 38 stacked images from the shooting you just saw. It's now sharp across the whole image. So if you go to the bottom and look at the engravings and the letters here, you even see the tiny little mistakes that I made with the color. For instance, on that S letter here, and it's really, really sharp. And you see all the details. You even see the structure of that moon surface, which Omega decided to have here in that box. Very nice, moving on to the watch. You see the little scars this watch already has, some dirt on it or dust, and then all in a very, very sharp image. Here you see the first moon landing engraved in the wand of the watch. And uh, this is sharp going up to the upper part of the image. You see here the engravings, very sharp. So that's what you can achieve with focus stacking because in general macro lenses have a shallow depth of field and even if you close the aperture, you will not get everything in focus. And here it took me 38 images stacked together to get that actually in a good shape where everything is sharp. And then of course you can also go further here and can look into a way to transform that image in a way getting it in a rectangle form because here of course you still have these corners here at the borders which might not be very attractive if you want to print it. So you can also get it in this form here and I think that's very nice. What I also discovered from that shooting is that although I had some cleaning efforts before on the watch, I had fingerprints on the watch and uh, that is not good for a shooting. In particular if this would be a product shooting which you are going to sell. So this is a mistake which should not happen and uh, I will use the opportunity now to quickly show the workflow of automated focus stacking. I'll clean the watch before, get this in a better situation here, and then doing an automated focus stacking shooting via the XF body, and also 
cutting out the middle part of the watch and doing some further post-processing to set the watch nicely into scene with a second shooting. That will not take long because automated focus stacking is very convenient on the Phase 1 XF body. And then we look at the final result and I conclude on the video. So it's cleaning time again. And uh, I also removed the watch strap because the back side or flip side of the watch is as impressive as its front side. And I also wanted to shoot this one to actually see the watch from both sides. Let's get started with the second shooting. When I then looked at the results and did a little bit of post-processing in Capture One, it was blowing me away. Fantastic image clarity and sharpness across the whole image and focus stacking in the XF body, but also manually we are tethered shooting, did play out quite nicely for me. And the flip side of the watch is even more impressive. So much structure, texture, details, and actually a very interesting message coming from 1969. So I think that shooting worked very, very well for me. And uh, it's of course a high-tech shooting, it's expensive equipment, but if you need it for product photography, if you need it in studio photography, this is the tool to go to, in my personal opinion. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration here. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you again on my channel and peace out.